Velkommen til Under Kalotten. En podcast, som tager afsæt i relationen til Israel. I denne udgave af Under Kalotten skal vi høre vicepræsident Barry Dennison fra den kristne ambassades hovedkontor i Jerusalem fortælle om mødet mellem kristen og jødisk kultur. Vi slutter af det hebraiske hjørne med Ulrik Flinta, men først er der nyt om turistrejser i Israel. Rejser til Israel er efterspurgt. Efter to lange år med minimum af muligheder for at rejse, har mange savnet at komme til Israel. Nye tal viser, at rejselysten er tilbage, og det mærker man i rejsebranchen. Københavns Lufthavns passagertal viser, at 8 ud af 10 rejsende er tilbage sammenlignet med før pandemien. Peter Nissen fra Felix Rejser fortæller, at efter Israel har fået fjernet alle restriktioner, er interessen steget voldsomt. På den israelske ambassade oplever man ganske rigtigt, at rejselysten er kommet mere i gang. Hos Felix Rejser mærker man ikke, at inflationen holder danskerne tilbage fra at booke en rejse til udlandet. Peter Nissen siger, at krigen i Ukraine måske har fået folk til at trykke lidt på bremsen, men ikke når det gælder Israel. Eller ikke nyheder om uro i Israel har betydning. Fokus på blandt andet Ukraine har betydet, at medierne ikke fortæller om konflikthistorier fra Mellemøsten. Desuden er israelerne gode til at passe på deres turister, siger Peter Nissen. Han siger, at det er mere trygt at rejse i Israel end i USA. Interesse hos rejsearrangørerne. Den internationale kristne ambassade er en af de rejsearrangører, som igen udbyder grupperejser. Den nationale leder Christina Elisabeth Leinum fortæller, at der er stor interesse for deres turrejse i oktober til Løvhyttefesten. Vi har siden 1980 taget danskere med til Løvhyttefesten i Jerusalem. At vi ikke har været der de seneste to år har været smertigt, så er det en ekstra stor glæde, at vi igen kan repræsentere Danmark med en gruppe danskere. Den internationale kristne ambassades danske afdeling udbyder to slags rejser for at imødekomme alles økonomi. Lejnum siger, vi vil gerne give flest mulige en chance for at komme med, så vi har lagt os i selen for at lave to rejser, som vi håber dækker alles behov. Om coronaen siger hun, vi ved ikke, hvad fremtiden bliver med hensyn til pandemier, så derfor bruger vi det vindue, der er for at komme afsted. Tal fra Israels turistministerium viser, at besøgende danske turister er mere end tredoblet siden februar og er næsten oppe på niveau med tallet for turister i 2019. Barry Dennison er vicepræsident i den kristne ambassade og arbejder i hovedafdelingen i Jerusalem. Hans opgaver er at lede organisationens mange afdelinger projektledelse, så visionen den kan blive realiseret. Han står for infrastruktur, HR, IT og efteruddannelse af alt personalet. Vi møder ham på hans kontor i Jerusalem en varm dag, hvor han fortæller om ICEOs arbejde i Jerusalem og hvordan det skiller sig ud fra anden kristent arbejde i landet. Kan du just tell us why is it so important to have a physical presence in Jerusalem? Well, part of it goes to the call of ICEJ, which is from Isaiah 40, verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Mm. If you're going to comfort somebody, you've got to be close enough to touch them. Uh, you've got to be available to look them in the eyes, listen to them, hug them. And uh, there are many Christian organizations that have a goal of blessing Israel, but the majority of them only send checks. They, they're outside of Israel, and so they, they send money to projects, but there's no human relationship. Um, and, you know, with 40 years of pastoral experience, the, the nature of the body of, of Messiah, mm. the body of Christ, the church, is relationships. Mm. Um, Jesus came to restore our relationship to the Father, mm. and we have to have healthy relationships with one another. And so... With our calling to be a witness of the love of Jesus for the people of Israel, we've got to be able to be here to show them that comfort. What What is it that you see coming as an American into this culture that is so somewhat different? It, it's Middle Eastern. Sure, it has Western uh, elements to it, but it's so different from ours. Well, I'll speak both as an American and as a Western Christian. Um, we in the, the pr- principally the, the Protestant evangelical streams of Christianity place a great emphasis upon what you believe, what you think about an issue. 
Judaism doesn't really care what you believe. They care what you do. Um, and one of the interesting discussions I had, you know, uh, someone raised, uh, a Jewish person raised, well, you Christians had these intense debates on baptism. We Jews don't debate whether or not we should keep the Sabbath. We debate how we keep it. There is no issue of, of whether or not you believe. The issue is how do you? And so it's a, it's a culture that is focused on, you can almost say from James, the book of James, faith without works is dead. I don't care what you believe unless I see it in your actions. Um, and that's what we are here as the Christian embassy to do is through our actions, show the Jewish community in Israel and around the world that there are Christians who are not anti-Semitic. There are Christians who love and support Israel and the Jewish people because of God's promises and God's covenants. Um, and that, that, that's kind of earth shattering for them because for the last 2000 years, the Jewish view is the Christians are their greatest enemy. And we're here to change that. Yeah. So as I was at the, um, the Shabbat on, on Friday, uh, we were invited into the synagogue to partake in their worship. I absolutely love the worship. I loved everything around being in that presence. And afterwards, we ended up talking to some of them. They said, we didn't know that there were Christians who love us. Yes. There are still to this day Jews who haven't heard that there are Christians who actually like Israel. Yes. and love Jews. So what can we do about that? Do more of what we're doing. That's, that's why ICEJ is here. Um, it's why we run the home for Holocaust survivors. Um, why we try and get constantly in the Hebrew media, the press of the local language stories about what we're doing, because there are still many Israelis who have never heard of, well, Never heard of a Christian doing anything good for a Jew. And I'll tell a story. This was years ago, my first time I was here in Israel from 95 and 02. And I had to go visit uh, the vice president for business accounts of one of the Israeli banks. We were looking at opening a second banking relationship. And, you know, here's this 50, 55 year old female attorney kind of at the peak of her career, the big corner office on the tower of a bank building. And uh, she had a translator because her English wasn't good and my Hebrew wasn't good enough to do business. But she starts out, what are you here doing? And so I had my little five or six minute spiel about Christians and believing the covenants of God and what we're doing and all of this. Tears began to roll down her face. She excused herself, you know, went to the restroom briefly, powdered her nose, so to speak, comes back. And then in her own broken English, she said, excuse me, that was not very professional. But it's the first time I've ever heard of any Christian doing anything good for a Jew. And in that moment, I experienced both great shame and great pride. Shame over our, our history of Christian anti-Semitism and pride that I, I, God called me to live in this age when he's calling the church to reach out and bless Israel and the Jewish people. Yeah. Wow. Powerful story. So, can you tell us about the calendar and what is going to happen in the future with ICEJ? Well, the, the Christian embassy was birthed out of a Christian gathering for the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah. Um, some leaders, Christian leaders living here in the land in the late seventies recognize that Isaiah, not Isaiah, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 says, there will come a day in which the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people of all of the nations of the world will come up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord during Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, and that actually happened in 79 and then in 80 happened again and at that large gathering they, the, these group of leaders decided to create a Christian embassy. And so since 1980 the Christian embassy has been hosting the Christian celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles here in Jerusalem. Normal years we have 
over 90 nations represented, anywhere between 3,000 and 7,000 Christians in the land. Obviously, these last few years with COVID, nobody could come. It was totally virtual online. Um, this year, October 9 through 16, we will be having a, a hybrid event, physical event for those who are in the land, and yet everything recorded on video and on a platform, and people can watch it live and or afterwards for up to 90 days. Um, showing the land, this year the, the theme of the feast is the land of promise. And so we actually, during the feast, travel from the Galilee down south to near the Gaza Strip. And uh, with worship, would be a lot of emphasis on worshiping together with believers in the land, singing songs of worship in Hebrew and English and other languages. Because of the large number of nations represented, we have everything normally translated into 10 to 15 different languages. Um, and uh, it's an amazingly exciting time for Christians to be here in the land. One of the most exciting events during that is the Jerusalem March, where uh, Christians march through the streets of Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles. And Jewish Israelis from around the nation come to Jerusalem to watch these Christians, and they weep because of Christians showing their love for Israel. So I hope to see all of you here in Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles. I hope so, too. The more the merrier. Thank you so much Amen. for setting time aside to this. Thank Appreciate you, it. Bless you. Det sproglige hjørne. Shalom og velkommen, hvor vi i dag kigger på det næstsidste bogstav. Og det er det 21. bogstav i det hebraiske alfabet. Og i virkeligheden er det faktisk to bogstaver, vi skal have fat på. For det er både bogstavet sin og bogstavet shin. Og de to bogstaver ligner hinanden på en prik, kan man sige. Der er bare lige en forskel på, hvor man sætter en prik. Og det, det kan jeg selvfølgelig ikke forklare her i radioen. Men hvis, hvis prikken står til venstre, så, så er det et sin. Og hvis prikken står til højre, så er det et shin. Så det er altså to S-lyde. Det er en meget vigtig bogstav i Israel og jødisk liv, fordi for eksempel på alle døre er der en lille øh, mesusa, hedder den, en lille bønd i en lille kasse, og på den er der et billede af sådan et bogstav, et shin eller et sin. Og det hænger nok sammen med, at en af de vigtigste bønder i Israel er bønden Shema. Hør Israel, Herren din Gud, Herren er en. Det er fra 5. Mosebog, kapitel 6, vers 4. Og der er det, det her ord, Shema, altså at høre, det er netop øh, med bogstavet Shin. Ordet for at høre er et af de vigtigste ord i teologien. Man kan sige, at al teologi starter med, at vi starter med at lytte til Gud og høre, hvad han har at sige til os. Det er der, hvor alting starter. Og så nok er der en nær sammenhæng mellem at høre og at adlyde på hebraisk. Der er ikke to ord, der er et ord, Shema, og det betyder både at høre og at adlyde. Og det synes jeg har en meget vigtig pointe til os. Vi må ikke bare nøjes med at lytte til, hvad Gud siger. Vi må ikke bare nøjes med at tænke over det. Nej, vi skal gøre det, han siger, for det er der, livet begynder. Hør Israel. Gud vil sige dig. Shalom. lytte til en podcast fra ICEJ Danmark. Ønsker du at vide mere om organisationen, kan du gå ind på icej.dk. Her er der også mulighed for at støtte organisationens arbejde og denne podcast.